That's good, Joe. Hey. <laughs> Nearly burnt. I think I burnt my lip a little bit. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Made the water too hot. Put some Windex on it. Ugh. <laughs> this is what I get for doing. This is what I get for doing tea today instead mm -hmm, of coffee. Mm -hmm. But either or, I think we're being. I think we're being surveilled. We should probably. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Good point. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the General Geekery Podcast, the podcast where we love to geek out about all the things that we love and uh, know. Um, yeah, pretty much all that. <laughs> this is a very. Um, this is, as always, Donald Kaczynski sounding a little hoarse today, um, unfortunately. Um, and with me, as always, is uh, Hannah Kubiak. What's up, Hannah? Hey. Um, I don't usually say anything at this point, except, hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit hoarse also, <clears throat> trying hard not to have the uh, the vocal fry. I had the, I had the plague over the late week oh. so yeah <laughs> yeah that'll that'll help that mm -hmm. that'll affect it i was mm -hmm. i could barely do jigsaw puzzles with my caregiving client that's how oh, bad man, it was that, I, that, that, oh that's horrible i'm sorry uh-huh yeah <laughs> no nope. as for me i was at a uh i was at a special wrestling show on friday that's um, right. screaming my head off um, I think I lost my voice, but there was like eight mm -hmm. different, there was eight matches, um, that night. I think I started losing my voice come mm -hmm. the third match because, Dude. because it was a dream wrestling match that I wanted for a long time and mm -hmm. I didn't even know I was going to see it live. Dude. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, it's one of those things. We, we were like the entire night was like kept in suspense and we didn't even know it. Oh man. That's great. It's you, you. It's passion. It's one of the things we enjoy. Mm -hmm. Speaking of things we enjoy, um, for me particularly, I've probably said this on the podcast numerous times, I love Japanese anime. As do I. All right. That's awesome. And uh, anime holds a really special place uh, in my heart and I in the hearts of a lot of people that I know. And in mine. I am a person that you know, so I mean, that's, that's true. Fair, that's that, that's, that's a fair true. assumption. Well, like, we have... Um, friends associates co-workers that we know like that are affected by mm -hmm. by anime whether they're just watching it as a pastime whether they're deeply moved by like certain pieces mm -hmm. um some of it is more general than others but i think there's one there's a there's a certain style that mm -hmm. is accessible by everyone and for that, I'm talking specifically about the films released by the Japanese animation studio, Studio Ghibli. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I don't have to embarrass myself by mispronouncing that. No, don't worry. I got, yep. I, I got, I got you covered. I got you Ghibli. covered. Ghibli, okay. Ghibli, 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 yep. Ghibli, 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 yep. Ghibli. So, um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, uh, Studio Ghibli's works, um, Ghibli was a Japanese animation studio that was originally founded in the 1980s with their first feature film coming out in, I believe, 1985 or 87, um, with uh, their first feature length being Nauts Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. Oh. And, uh, I didn't get to that one. That, that's, that's all yeah, right. You, yeah. you, you got, you got to, some, to some good ones, though, yeah. so we're good. <coughs> Since then, um, Ghibli has gone on to produce some amazing animated works that have influenced many people in both the um, the general public as well as um, those in filmmaking as well. Like several of um, films that were produced by Studio Ghibli, and particularly those who were that were directed by uh, Studio One Studio Ghibli co-founder Hayao Miyazaki, mm -hmm. especially. Like his films are ninety percent of his like filmography is highly acclaimed. Yep. In the world of anime. Oh man, it's amazing. I'm trying to find the films in the order that they were made. <clears throat> oh, I can, I, I can. Do you do you have that already? Do you do you? Oh, works. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Works. Oh, the Wh what? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, 1986, Castle in the Sky. Okay, that was the second one. Oh, okay, that was the first um, Miyazaki then, maybe. All right, so probably no Nausicaa was probably the first Ghibli. I think Castle in the Sky was the first like full Miyazaki. I could be oh, wrong on okay. that. For the for those that are more uh, um, 
I would say uh, familiar with uh, Ghibli than uh, we are. Please let let us know if we're uh, right or wrong on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that a castle in the sky. That's the first one that I saw that um, is on the list here. With Castle in the Sky? Yeah, it was made in 1986. All right, yeah. so um, I just finished that this morning. <laughs> oh, that that one's one of that one's one one of the first ones I watched. Oh man, it was great. I've seen it before, actually. Like I remembered kind of, I remembered kind of what happened, but I didn't remember have, remember how it ended or anything like that. So mm-hmm. that was cool. I. I loved it. It it grew on me. It kind of had a slow start. Well, actually, no. It escalated quickly at the beginning because the people broke in and she fell out the window or whatever. Right. <laughs> like, like kind of jarring for like your first five minutes. Just like, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And I I loved the characters. They were so sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. And like, I, uh, I love that sort of just like... Like, Patsu had such this, such a, like... <laughs> innocent chivalrous puppy love kind of thing going on for um um what is her name he screamed it all the time Sheeta. 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 i got you covered <laughs> yeah and um oh it was great like and just ah, uh, such a funny character and um oh i i loved it i i yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely like like I said before, this was probably one of the first Miyazaki films I watched. Um, mm. I, I actually, the first time I watched it was actually um, on Cartoon Network when it, it was showing it just randomly when I was a kid growing up. Hmm. Like I, I have a Cartoon Network Miyazaki experience also, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, Spirited Away. <laughs> My sister and I were like... Um, I've probably mentioned this before because it was a big part of my life, but all the, all of my summers, um, I spent at my dad's house and, um, he would always be at work. So my sister and I would basically just watch TV all day for Uh. the whole summer. So we have seen so much, so much Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. It's not even funny. And, um, we'd never seen Spirited Away before and we were, Mm -hmm. it was our first it was our first experience of Miyazaki, um, which we didn't know that at the time. But we were watching right. it, and we were like, this is so weird. I can't stop watching it. <laughs> and I know Spirited Away was one of the ones you watched. We'll, we'll get to that one. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll get to that yeah, one. Because yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's a tough nut to crack. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, like, it, it's, it's probably, like, one of the most well-known names in uh, anime. Like, if you, were, mm-hmm. if you were to talk to someone who normally doesn't watch um anime or is clueless as to it mm-hmm. odds are if they've seen they've probably seen at least one studio um ghibli film and that's mm-hmm. because for the longest time ghibli had a working relationship with disney yeah in order to bring the films over to the west oh, for the dubs yeah well it was originally dubbed by um other um dubbing companies from mm-hmm. like uh america and canada like mm-hmm. in the 80s but ever since like the 90s when uh, they started uh when Ghibli started working hand in hand with uh, mm-hmm. uh, Disney, that's when uh, we most of the films were redubbed um, mm-hmm. uh, and re-released uh, into the West. Th- thankfully, I wonder which dub of Castle in the Sky did you give me? I I gave you the one that had the Disney the the, the original Disney one. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. I had no idea that Mark Hamill did a voice in that. I didn't. I didn't recognize. Him. I didn't recognize him at all. Uh, it was like, yeah, it was like a, only a couple of years after after Return of the Jedi, right? Um, somewhat. I think they did the dub. Nineteen eight. When did they do the dub? Because well, the the movie was released in nineteen eighty six. Well, the, well, the movie was released in nineteen eighty seven, but um, they re, they redid the. Uh, I think they redid the voices sometime between the late eighties and the early two thousands. Oh, when, uh, okay. When yes. when uh, Disney w- w- originally released it, uh-huh. um, for well for the re-release anyway, but um, yeah, yeah um, <sighs> Mark Hamill is so good. Oh my gosh, in that. yeah, like <laughs> no, the guy like oh the voice that he did for that guy, I was like oh my gosh, what an ass! Like for, from the be- for, from the beginning, it was like 
Finally, the yes. city of Laputa. <laughs> like, for those up, for man. those not for those not familiar with Mark Hamill's voice work, oh, he's done the Joker like so many times. He he ba- basically <laughs> almost any version of the Joker that you have seen, whether it be from the Batman animated series in the nineties mm-hmm. to the Batman Arkham uh, series of games. Yeah. Mark Hamill is probably the most recognized Joker out of mm-hmm. any of them. Yeah. And and in my opinion is probably the best iteration of the Joker. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. because he's got he's got the mannerisms and the laugh down more yeah. perfect than I think any live action actor mm-hmm. could do. Yeah. And he's I got that voice. And I say that with a grain of salt because mm-hmm. I love the iterations that um were produced by Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger and mm-hmm. also recently Joaquin Phoenix although that mm-hmm. one is that one's a little different that you have to analyze. Yeah. But anyway, we're back to back to Castle in the Sky, back to Castle in the Sky and uh-huh. uh, <laughs> and uh, the lovely Studio Ghibli. Yeah. That it was so it was so nice. Like I think what Ghibli does um, best is like highlighting like n- like nature shots. Oh um, my gosh! Like yes. Like the scene um like in like near the third <laughs> act of the movie when they reach um. Laputa, the like the the city, the castle in the sky, mm-hmm. and like h- how it's all ruined and so much greenery has grown over it. It's gorgeous to look mm-hmm. at. Oh yeah. Which ultimately, which, well, everybody and their dog has said so much about like the animation and mm-hmm. the sound quality and music that comes from Ghibli films, but. Mm-hmm. Like, you never forget, like, your first that really enthralls you. And for me, it was Castle in the Sky. Yeah. Oh, man. And now for you, you said earlier, was Spirited Away. Spirited Away was the first, was the first, uh, Studio Ghibli film I have, I saw. That's a weird one to start with. It's a weird one to start with, but at the same time, a lot of people usually recommend it because mm-hmm. it's probably one of their most successful works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but by far their most popular. I love the yeah, I love the world of that <clears throat> of that one actually. It's <laughs> and it's great. So for the, uh, so I'll 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 put like a spoiler warning like before like the start of the episode when uh, I go to edit it. But for those yep. not familiar with uh, Spirited Away, mm-hmm. um, the general synopsis is that um, the our main protagonist, who's a ten year old girl, um, is moving to a new place with her family for, um, for the first time, and she's not particularly excited about it. I wouldn't say so. No. To, to say to say the least. <laughs> Somehow they stumble upon like an alternate. Um, reality where um uh, demons and monsters and uh spirits are more commonplace and during the events somehow her parents get transformed into pigs yeah well they they eat at the the like sushi bar or something yeah they they start pigging out yeah they start picking out and eventually (laughs) devolve into pigs how that how that works i don't even know tis magic (laughs) there's witch there's witchcraft a brute (laughs) but um yeah, like that entire film is such eye candy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so colorful and it has. It, yeah, it makes me want to. It makes me want to pig out on all the food that you see. <laughs> around. Yeah, <laughs> it it has such a more distinct feel compared to a lot of um, mm. uh, Ghibli's films like mm-hmm. prior to it. Yeah, because I think Spirit Away was like their first major um, film of the two thousands, mm-hmm. and wow. Just wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was the highest grossing like film in Japan for like the longest time. For like oh, o- for like over a decade, I want to say. Holy crap. <laughs> at, at least in the animation department. I don't mm-hmm. know about like total, but like at the same time, like anime is a huge um uh is a huge commercial success mm-hmm. in, in its native country of Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, man. Hmm. I think probably one of my favorite parts from that movie is, um, well, it's also kind of gross, but the, like, well, she's, like, working, she's working in the bathhouse, and right. that giant, that giant mud monster comes in, and she, <laughs> she has to clean it up, and it ends up being this tiny little, tiny little spirit guy, what, or, or whatever, I, I don't know, it was just really cool. The uh, the animation of it sort of just vomiting up all of this trash <laughs> that it had eaten is like, well, this is where the spirits come to get to get cleaned up. <laughs> I 
<laughs> bathhouse for spirits. Oh man, it's it, it's it's just so one like wonderful, like especially mm-hmm. like for us who grew up in the generation that got it. Mm-hmm. Like our like our minds being expanded by all this creativity that shown before us and the animation, the music, the like the story and everything. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm 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 just blown I'm just blown away. <laughs> yeah. Like I love I love Studio Ghibli to death. <laughs> like and Hannah can attest to this because I have a large collection of Studio yeah. Ghibli films that I lent to her and I yep. and I didn't even lend her all of it. Yeah, there are there get... are there are a few films that I had that I forgot to give you, but and I didn't get to all of them either. I I kind I kind of figured, but like mm-hmm. you got to some very important ones. Yeah, yeah, I tried to I tried to choose wisely, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you chose another really important one, which um, I would like to bring up next, since mm-hmm. you watched in that order. Um, the My Neighbor Totoro. Oh gosh. Okay. To, the the film that made Ghibli's mascot. Yup. Yup. So. Um, what are your thoughts on that one? Um, g- give a little synopsis of what it's about for the for people first. I think you'd be better at that. I. Okay. You just, know what? Yeah, that's a very good question. I literally just watched that this morning too. Well, wow, you you watched both wor- Castle in the Sky and Totoro this morning. Well, no, I I was more than halfway done with Castle in the Sky. Oh, okay. So I'm t- a binger, but not that much. Um, yeah, but I was I was working all weekend, so <laughs> I had to I had to cram for my my test. <laughs> all right. So, long story short, um, it's a story about um a family that just recently um uh, moved somewhere new. Um. Mm-hmm. And the two daughters um, come across spirits in the the nearby forest of which they now, like, live near. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the spirits is, if I remember right, the guardian of the forest, Mm -hmm. Totoro. Yep. Who's probably the most recognizable figure from this film because he would go on to become the mascot for Studio Ghibli. Right, yeah. When you look it up, isn't it on the logo? Is yep, Totoro is him to- in profile? He's yep, like this- to- Totoro is on the logo. Yep, he's this, like, he's this rotund, giant, sort of chibi thing, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a giant, rotund, chibi teddy bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Like you just want to hug him. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and I know, and I know the youngest has probably done so many times. Yep. In that film. Uh huh. Oh yeah. It looks so squishy. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that that movie. Um, it underwhelmed me at first, and then about halfway through it, <coughs> I was hooked. It made me want to go go uh, go run around in the rain with an umbrella in my because when I was a little girl, my um. In, in California, when it would rain, um, my my mom and my, my sister, my brother, and I, we would say, "Mom, mom, mom, we want to go outside and play in the rain." And so she'd say, "Okay, get your get your get your uh, rain gear on." And we had rain jackets and rain pants and rain boots. <laughs> and they were all matching, like like navy blue rain gear and oh, we would go outside goodness. and run around with our hoods up we'd run around in the rain and jump in the puddles and stuff and it was so much fun and i um that bit where they were standing with their umbrellas at the bus stop just made me think of that i'm like oh i want to go out and play in the rain like i did when yeah. i was little oh yeah and then totoro appears like right beside him and he's just like just shaking it. yeah he just <laughs> appears he just yeah. appears just like just shake shaking it like a dog like shaking water off his fur yeah. oh my god that was yeah yeah that yeah it's, it's... It's so adorable. Yeah, it made me want to rediscover the playful imagination of my childhood. Like, I'm I'm creative. I'm a th- I'm a theater person. I'm an artist. But part of me has sort of lost that, or never fully unlocked it, because I was really shy. So. Yeah. I kind of wish that I had done more just running around with abandon and telling people about the things that I imagined. Because even as a little kid, I was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to really, like, when I was a little kid, basically, I didn't really play pretend, you know, like kids do. Okay. Because when I was like, I don't know, four or five or something, I was like, hmm, grownups think that's stupid. I'll play pretend. But it'll be a secret. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so, <clears throat> which is probably why I do theater now. 
Yeah, because yes, I'll play pretend for all of these uh, strangers. Exactly, you make you a ca- you make a career out of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, yeah, and <coughs> about my childhood, and yeah, halfway through, it got me like the, the um, what's it? Where the little sister goes, runs away, mm-hmm. and the they say that the the mom is the mom is getting worse because she was in the hospital and oh, stuff, yeah. and that got me really hard. Probably just like. Probably because, like, my family went through a rough patch when myself and my sister were, like, the same age as those two in the oh, movie. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I was just sitting there, and I was like, oh, no, oh, I don't, the, I don't oh, need wow. this right now. <laughs> okay, so you had more of a connection with it than probably I did then. Yeah, no, I connected with it a lot. Yeah, which is which is interesting. I wasn't expecting it, because when I watched it at the beginning, I was kind of like... Eh, it's okay. They're exploring the house. La da da. You know, but oh, it it touched me. Yeah. Oh, although I do have to say, I think Totoro is probably the most low stakes film in Ghib- uh, Ghibli's library. Yeah, but not for kids. Not 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 for kids. But at the same time, it's just mm-hmm. it's probably one of the more charming ones. Yeah. I think it's more relatable. Yeah, like, like, I think the most relatable, like, Ghibli films are that and Kiki's Delivery Service. Yeah, that's on my, that's in my stack that you gave me, but I didn't, uh, I didn't watch it yet. It's all right. Like, you, Kiki's, you have to be in the right kind of mood to enjoy. That one's one of my personal favorites, too. Yeah, okay, I'll let you know what I think when I watch it. All right, and, um, there was, uh, one last one that you watched, um, and it was... You said, I think you said, like, this was one that you really enjoyed, like, prior. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, Howl's Moving Castle. Howl's Moving Castle. I've seen it before. I don't remember where. You know what? I think I saw it with some friends when I studied abroad. Okay. I seem to recall. And you said you were in, uh, I think we had this conversation, like, before we started recording. You said you were in Ireland at the time? No. Scotland? Uh, Austria. Austria, okay, yeah, okay. Scotland was another thing. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Very widely traveled, but... Not really. I don't think so. More widely traveled than I am, also. <laughs> yeah, well, I studied abroad in Austria, and that was where we watched it. Um, I enjoyed it. I I watched it with a friend of mine who's actually a listener. Hello, Miranda. Hello. Um, and it was great. We we got a kick out of the 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 dub. Um, casting of Christian Bale because <laughs> he's just because Howell was just this like this vain s- selfish like pretty boy pretty boy wizard yeah and, and there was that part where she like rearranged his bathroom and it made his it made his hair a different color and he comes running out and he's like look what you did to my hair <laughs> and he was like I don't see the point in living if I can't be beautiful and Miranda and I both just Wah! That's gonna because we were sitting there. And I was like, "Well, that's Christian Bale, I think." <laughs> you know? Okay, you want to know something hilarious? I know a couple. Of, I know a couple. Of of course, people, I, I know a couple of people have done this, but um, do you remember um Christian Bale's meltdown audio clip from behind the scenes of when he did the Terminator movies and he's just yelling at like one of the cameramen to do his job right? No. Okay, so apparently, like, he goes off on like <laughs> either the stagehand or this cameraman, <laughs> like mm-hmm. um. Uh, like he just goes way off. Like, oh, oh my no. god! Like his patience was tried. Stage hands and cameramen, you gotta respect them. But true, damn. you gotta respect them. But also at the same time, like uh, Bale was just not having it. Yeah. Somebody took the like. Apparently, that audio got leaked. <laughs> Somebody took the audio mm. and put and um, edited it in that se- specific <laughs> scene. Oh my gosh, that's great! And I and I came across it um mm-hmm. like one random day when I was just like going through YouTube back in high school and I saw mm-hmm. something like this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bravo to whoever did this. Mm-hmm. Oh, and um and S- Sophie as well, old Sophie. Oh man, I loved her. She was she was great. I was I was thinking to myself, man, this is my this is my like old age goal here is to <laughs> is to. Give as few cares as she does. Like, <laughs> there's that whole thing where terrible stuff happens, and she's like, "All right, come on, let's clean up." Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember. Uh, 
Or what is it? When she and the um, Witch of the Waste are climbing up the stairs. Oh, yeah. And the Witch of the Waste is struggling a bunch. And she's she's saying to Sophie, she's saying, help me. And Sophie's carrying that dog as well. And she's like, what's that you said? You want, you want to reverse the spell you put on me? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> it it's, a, it's a charming one. I think it's probably... It's not the first time they've adapted a previous like literary work, but mm-hmm. it's certainly like yeah, one of the more book. yeah based off, based off of, based off a book um, similar to one of their earlier works as well. But I'll talk about that in a moment. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, I was rereading this the other day. But it apparently Howl's Moving Castle is one of Miyazaki's favorites mm-hmm. out of his entire library. It's it's good. You like it, like it was a passion project. Mm-hmm. So. It definitely shows through in his work. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Some other... uh, I know one film in Ghibli's library has scarred me for for a long, long, long time. Tell me what it is so I can watch it. I don't don't know. (sighs) I'm kind of scared. Go for it. I don't have it, but... Have you ever heard of a film called Grave of the Fireflies? I read about it on Wikipedia. Okay. In the list. Well, I just saw that it was the name of a film on here. It, it, it's among like one, some of their first works. It, it This one was not directed by Miyazaki, but Ghibli had a hand in creating it. Oh, yeah. It was 1988. It, it, yep. It was based off of a um. Uh, lit, it was based off of another literary work. Um. Actually, if I remember correctly, I think the author of the original novel helped worked on the storyboard for this movie, but I could mm-hmm. be wrong. Um. It's set in um, uh, World War II time Japan and follows um, a brother and a sister as they go through the country um, during all of this. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't say anything more than that. If I say, like, for for yourself and for uh, everyone else listening, if you have not seen Grave of the Fireflies, I'm doing it a huge disservice just by... Um, if I say everything, but mm-hmm. also, but for also for those of you who are listening and have seen Grave of the Fireflies, you understand my pain. Mm-hmm. It it hits hard. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I, I think that was probably like one of the first anime films I cried. Uh-huh. Like I saw it when I saw it when I was a kid and I cried. Like I and I recently um a few years ago like um. A local movie theater that um, I live near was doing a special showing of it. I'm like, I think I can take it now. It's worse on the movie screen! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or is it one of those ones where it's like, it's worse when you get older! You understand more! <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I still have, like, the same emotion. Well, I, mm-hmm. I originally saw it, like, when I was a teenager. Yeah. So, that raw emotion that I felt when I was a teenager on the theater mm-hmm. screen was still there. Oh, yeah. But just a little more heightened just because of the fact, like... Mm-hmm. Instead of being at home where you can like be safe or anything, you're in a public place and you're trying to keep it together. Yeah. Oh, that's that's the worst. I that made me think of Empire of the Sun. Really? Which? Yeah. Well, because it's it's a World War Two era Japan. Mm-hmm. Right. Actually, right. it was one of Christian Bale's first movies when he was a little boy. That's he's right. So, I forgot so about cute. that. Oh. He plays a little English boy. In 1987, this film was made. Oh, man. It it got me. It got me. Because he's, he's English, and he lives in Japan, and then the war happens, and his parents, they get separated in a crowd or something, and his parents, he doesn't know where they went. I think, I think maybe they survived, but they got separated. Okay. So he's just in Japan during... This little British boy in Japan during World War II, and it's about how he survives, and he becomes friends with this Japanese kid, and it, oh, broke my heart. I love, I love movies about people of different cultures and races becoming friends and starting to understand each other and all that, so. I, I think you mentioned that when, it, like, a previous episode when you mentioned The Last Samurai. But. Yep, Last Samurai. Oh. Yeah. Hotel Rwanda got me in the same way. Oh, that's another good one. Oh, it hurts so much. It's the white priest and the white nuns wanted to get bring the orf, the little um, African orphans onto the bus, 
and they wouldn't let the orphans on the bus. They were like, no, white people only, and the like the priests and the nuns and the kids were crying as they tore them apart and put the put the white people on the bus and the kids were left behind just because they were black. It was uh, horrible. I hated it. Th- but I that's loved fair. it. That was a movie that I sobbed watching it. <laughs> that's fair. That's absolutely fair. But back to anime. The, uh, another <laughs> medium that also makes us sob uncontrollably. <laughs> oh man. So Attack um, on Titan. Don't love anybody. <laughs> Okay. okay, I'm good now. Um, so, um, I just I decided I decided to do something a little bit differently um, for uh, this topic. Um, mm. On uh, we're going to sing. No, not uh. not not with our horse voices. I I I can't. What do you mean you're not gonna sing? I can't sing with this horse you voice. You can't Hannah. sing. Of course, you can always sing. Uh, no, I I I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather not with this horse voice. I don't think the audience would appreciate it. Well, okay. At, at, le- at least from me. Well, okay. Okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that. That's that improv coming in. Mm-hmm. All right. But um, so I decided to do something a little bit different. Um, I went on to um, uh, I went onto my social media accounts on uh, Facebook, Twitter, as well as um uh, a Discord page that oh. uh I run. A dangerous pastime. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. And uh, I was asking um, for uh, people to, uh, I just asked a simple question. Like, what was, what have been some of your uh, favorite memories or movies or experiences from uh, Studio Ghibli films? And um, uh, a majority of uh, responses that I've gotten back, um, a lot of people have, of course, said Spirited Away. Mm -hmm. It's... I think that one pretty much explains for, for itself. Um, I've also had um, uh, Castle Sky mentioned, Howl's Moving Castle, uh, mm-hmm. a few for Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind, and then um, there were a few that went a little bit um, offside and did some of the ones that are not often in discussion. Mm-hmm. Like uh, um, there was ones called there was some uh, Porco Rosso, Pompoco, um, the Secret World of Arietti. Mm-hmm. Um, a more recent Wait, one. The Secret World of Arietti is that the one that's based off the Borrowers? I think so. I've seen that. Oh, you have? Yes. A awesome. long time ago when I was in college. Back when I was a young sprout. Back when we were just young whippersnappers. Yes. All I remember is it was based off of the Borrowers, though. I barely remember anything that happened in it. Um, I remember uh I remember we had a sneak peek screening at uh Anime Milwaukee the year like it was um, going to be released in English like we were one of the first uh, that have le- that had like a special screening if I remember correctly wow. so that was that was amazing that was absolutely incredible were you at Anime with Milwaukee this year no I, wow. I, I I couldn't I couldn't go this year because um, I had to work and uh, um, I was I needed to save money for other mm-hmm. things yep I wanted to go too but I also had to save money ne- next year we will next year next year we will and I'll see if I can put in a panel for us to do a live podcast oh recording live from the Milwaukee Recording live Whatever. from Anime Milwaukee 2021. That'll and we'll talk just like that. Just and they'll like never that. ask us to come back. Uh-huh. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, I'll I'll see I'll see what I can do about that. Oh, um, great. Awesome. But uh yeah, like see a roller Ariadne's like a lot of recent ones are like a lot of recent like um Ghibli films from like I want to say like post um post Howls. Mm-hmm. To like now, like they've garnered good success, but they're. I don't think a lot of them have been reached instant classic status, kind of like how Spirited Away, Castle in the Sky, um, mm-hmm. Princess Mononoke. Oh my God, Princess Mononoke! I could go about that one for a while. That one's like mm-hmm. my favorite. Princess Mononoke. Yeah. Um. Oh gosh, that's on my list to see. I do. I do. Um. I did find my copy of it, so I can uh, lend it to you. I. For, I, yes. I, I. I literally lent it to you after, like, after our last recording, and I refound it. I'm like, oh dang it! I should have. <laughs> I, sh- I should remembered I had this. Yeah. Something I want to mention that I really, I really appreciate about these movies is the. It's predominantly these young female protagonists, which I love. It's um, it's very sweet, mm-hmm. and um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about it. <laughs> it's yeah, just that, that I think it's really cool <coughs> that um, that that's the demographic demographic that they choose to focus on, and 
a lot of these are sort of coming of age stories almost. They really are. Mia's I know Gip Ghibli likes to work a lot with um a good majority of their library usually involves like uh children before they like children as a young child or before they reach adulthood. Mm-hmm. Like there's only a few stories that I can movies that I can probably think of off the top of my head, like maybe Porco Rosso that mm-hmm. um have uh, protagonists that are uh, over the age of, like, maybe 15, 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, roughly. I think the oldest protagonist that I've seen was probably Sophie. Even before she had the oldness. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, before, like, before, like, Sophie before, from uh, Howl's Moving Castle before that, and... Mm-hmm. Maybe Nausicaa from Nausicaa in the Sky. All right, well, that's Nausicaa in my, the Valley that, of the Wind. That's in my stack, but I haven't I haven't seen it yet. Like that, Nausicaa and Castle in the Sky were my introductions to Ghibli. Mm-hmm. Those were my those were my main two. Cool, cool, cool. With Nausicaa being the first like full film they they produced. Yeah, I'd say yeah, Spirited Away. But at the time, I didn't know what it was because it was just this this weird. I didn't even know what it was called. It was just this weird anime movie that was playing. While my sister and I were home, and then years later, you find out we what found it. out what it was. We we were looking through stuff at the library or something. And said, "Hey, Teresa, I found it. This is that weird anime movie don't, we watched." Don't 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 you love that like like sense of like fascination and wonder? Like because mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people from our age group can mm-hmm. relate to this. Like before, mm-hmm. like um. Before the internet um, mm-hmm. became more accessible that you could access with the palm of your hand, um, all we had to go on was just, like, stuff from our memories. Yeah, we literally didn't know what it was called. We just knew what the girl looked like. We knew that there was that ghost with the white mask. And we were just sort of like, well, I guess we'll never see that movie again. I don't know what it was. And then, and, and then years later, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like even though it, it has an impact in your mind, but mm-hmm. it's right in the back of there. Mm-hmm. It's present. Mm-hmm. But when you see something that stimulates it, and then you, your mind goes into overload, like, you're mm-hmm. so overjoyed that you found it again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can, I can, mm-hmm. ha- I have so many experiences, like, with that, with, well, not just anime, but, like, just in general. Mm-hmm. But with, but with an with an anime, like movie or series, mm-hmm. it just feels like something special with that. Mm-hmm. It's like a it's like a reconnect to yeah. like to like your younger days, your childhood, like when everything seemed so innocent and mm-hmm. everything. You know, I have a similar thing, something along those lines. It's the only one I can think of. That what I um, when I was really small, I was at a friend's house and we started to watch Willow. Okay. Then my mom came and picked me up, and we didn't finish it. And to this day, I have not seen the end of Willow. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's... But I remember the beginning of it, and I remember that it was really cool because I I loved the the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, and I was like, look, it's another small person movie, <laughs> but there's a baby. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I loved what I saw, and then I haven't seen the rest of it. Oh man, that's that's great. And f- well, for me, like mm-hmm. there, there's not too many things left um, for me that um, mm-hmm. that I've forgotten and suddenly yeah. like rediscovered to there's figure out what it is. Not much I haven't seen. Like, like there's not much with that. But mm-hmm. one thing that usually like really gets me going, like mm-hmm. with Ghibli films or just any anime films in particular, is when um, local theaters um, do special screenings of. Um, all those old classics, mm-hmm. which, I, well, for those listening, I, I was the one that chose uh, this episode's topic, mm-hmm. and one of the reasons for that was that a local the- um, a local movie theater, um, generally, for the month of March, does special screenings of uh, Studio Ghibli Miyazaki films. Mm-hmm. Yep, Miyazaki March. Miyazaki March, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they do other anime films for April, aka Anime mm-hmm. April, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's... I, I was like, I felt that sense of wonder and excitement again. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, like, even though I've seen these films mm-hmm. so many times, yep. Just the, having the privilege again to see them on a big screen, whether they're subtitled in the original Japanese language or whether they're mm-hmm. it's the English dub. Yeah, I love taking time out of my day to just go do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's an experience unlike any other. 
Oh, that's great. And Hannah, if you do, if you do want to go to one of those showings, we'll, like we'll plan something. Awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Geek, course. Geekery trip. There's other there's other people I know who are going to that as well. So we'll yes. get a whole squad together. Squad up. We'll uh, we'll cosplay. Yes. Yes. All right. I've been wanting to um, I've been wanting to create a um, um, Izumi cosplay for a while. Oh. Uh, from Full Metal Alchemist. Yes. She is the bomb. Yes. And I could I could do it. I could tease my hair out to be really big. <laughs> the greatest housewife in anime. Oh, she, oh yes. Oh man. I, she and what's her name? Um Her husband. Gen, General Armstrong. Oh, uh, Olivier. Olivier. Oh. Uh, goals. Goals. Okay, well <laughs> we're gonna be talking about this later, maybe. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about Full Metal Alchemist another time when we can gush over that. We gotta focus on Miyazaki right now. We gotta, we gotta focus on the Ghibli. There's so much. There's oh, so I'm, much. I'm sorry, Mama Izumi. <laughs> oh. mm. Okay. Um. So. Um. I know, like my, I've I've said my profound, like the impact that Ghibli has had on me specifically. Mm-hmm. And um, Ghibli has had, like, a good impact on a lot of different people that I know. One of my best friends from Mm -hmm. college that I'm still in contact with, huge shout-out to you, Marty, he is a Ghibli super fan. Mm -hmm. Like, he he had the privilege of um, going to the um, Studio Ghibli Museum in Japan when he visited there months ago. (gasps) Unfortunately, they don't allow you to take pictures in there, but... Oh, that's okay. But I take pictures in my mind. Exactly. They, they, they develop better. Exactly. So, like, Ghibli is probably, like, one of the biggest impactful, like, studios in the anime industry. I think probably the most impactful, like, given mm. how far-reaching, like, their works have been, even to a casual viewer that doesn't know anime as much. Mm-hmm. So, Hannah, what... How has Ghibli impacted you? Um, For you personally? Me personally? Uh, well, kind of what I said before about uh, about Totoro. Uh, just, it makes me want to be a child again. And it makes me want to grow and be a bigger person. And take risks, which I guess you could say about all kinds of art, but these movies especially, just also because because there's so many l- girls of the age of like 10 to 15, you know, um, I just see myself in all of them a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh man, you are gonna love Kiki's then. Oh, <laughs> you are gonna love Kiki's. Oh man, yeah, and oh, it's great. And also, just I have, I have kind of a personal connection to Japan as well. I've never been there, but when I was when I was eight years old, I lived in I lived in L.A. for a year, right by Little Tokyo, mm-hmm. and my family and I went to went to church at this Japanese mission. So we had a lot of exposure to a bunch of. A bunch of Japanese people. We went to a, I don't know what it was called, but it was a week-long festival right across the street from us. They had these huge drum bands. They had noodle-eating contests. Hmm. They had these these little old women selling origami that they had made, like tiny, tiny little paper cranes that were perfectly folded and all this nice. stuff. And it just... It it fit with my aesthetic, basically. <laughs> it's sort of also I think eight is a very formative age. So yeah, it's yeah, sort yeah. of it sort of formed the way that I the way that I think and the things that I appreciate um in in that way. And it might also have contributed to my my deep desire to to get in touch with people who are different than me. Because at that Japanese mission it was basically my family, mm-hmm. which is just a bunch of, you know, white mutt people, <laughs> um, and then all the other parishioners were Japanese, and the priest was Japanese, and everything, and we felt very welcome, and they, I even took Japanese classes at the church, even though I didn't know what was going on. So, 
it kind of just, yeah, it kind of reminds me of that time in my life and how how it sort of formed the way that I think and the things that I enjoy. So Incredible. There you go. And as for me, like, for Ghibli's impact, like, anime's, like, had a big impact on me ever since I was a kid. I mm-hmm. I grew up watching, like, like all the shows, like, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Gundam, mm-hmm. all that on Toonami. Mm-hmm. And it always, like, brought a sense of, like, action and excitement and everything like that. But, again, like, around, like, seven or eight, almost like you, when I first got introduced to... Um, Castle in the Sky and Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind, when I first watched, sat down and watched those movies, mm-hmm. it gave it gave me more of a sense of wonder and an appreciation and an understanding that anime wasn't always about, like, just the action or anything like mm-hmm. that. Because we grew up um, during a time frame when anime became popular where mm-hmm. action was heavy. Mm-hmm. Especially because it was the era where um, Dragon Ball Z was, like, big in the mm-hmm. West. And I mean big. Yeah. yeah. Like, at, like at a time it became a bigger phenomenon than Pokemon. Yep. Yeah. And that's saying a lot. Mm-hmm. But, I remember watching a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, actually. <laughs> same, same. Like, like, like you, you know how, like, I have an entire collection of, like, Holy Yu-Gi-Oh cards crap. right down yeah, there. Yeah, no, I've noticed those. <laughs> yeah, like, I have tens upon tens upon tens mm-hmm. and several binders, but yep. that's back when I played the card game. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. um... I used to have a modest collection myself. I don't know where they went. It'll, it'll turn up. Yep, somewhere. But, um, <laughs> yeah, like, all this time, like, I think, like, I am, I'm, I love anime the way I love it now is because of Ghibli. Mm-hmm. It gave me a better understanding of, like, appreciating, um, more of the music, the story, like, the mm-hmm. atmosphere of, like, uh, how a scene goes. It mm-hmm. honestly just gave me, like, my appreciation for, like, understanding just like, all forms of art in general, in terms of, like, theater, art pieces, film. Mm -hmm. It was really, like, that first step into deeper thought Yeah, for me. Yeah. And... Yeah, it's magical. Yeah, and that's what I always love going back to, because it gives me that sense of deeper thought, but at the same time, it's a nice, safe environment that brings back such feelings of nostalgia and childhood. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's a beautiful feeling. Yep. Yep. And I, I can't thank Ghibli enough for that. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure many people feel the same way. It's pretty awesome. I think we, I think that's a, yeah. that's the right way to leave it off. I think so too. I yeah. finished my cup of coffee and that's usually how we, uh, that's t- how, how we judge, we, that's the, how we time that's how we judge the time. Yeah, exactly. When I finished my coffee, <laughs> probably, we probably finished our our topic also probably yeah so again guys um this has been um the general geekery podcast episode 17 wow yeah it is 17 yeah it is 17 okay yeah all right good all right i i i I just said it just because i felt confident but i'm never really confident whenever i say the episode titles (laughs) it's just this thing with me i don't understand it Mm -hmm. um so thank you guys again for listening in for this episode of the General Geekery Podcast. Um, a huge shout out to um, uh, all of our followers on uh, social media and all of our listeners that responded to um, uh, this, our social media post yeah. asking about Ghibli and uh, their thoughts on what their favorite films are. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you guys listening in as well. Speaking of social media, don't forget to follow us on social media at uh, Gen Geek Podcast on Instagram and uh, Facebook. And at General Geekery on Twitter, you can also follow. You can also listen to us on, of course, on Spotify, um, Spreaker.com, and also on uh, the YouTube channel, Anime Rev Productions, where we upload all the episodes there as well. Yep. Hannah, where can they check you out at? Well, I roll dice with my party every Monday at seven thirty Central Time on Twitch.tv slash Loaded Dice Adventures. And you can follow me on Instagram at Pythian Legume. All right. And you guys can check me out at uh, social media on Twitter, Instagram, and also my personal Twitch channel at MK 7 All the links for all that will be in the description below. Um, again, thank you guys so much for listening in on this episode of the podcast. Um, so until next time, guys, for, um, for Hannah, I'm Donald, and... Hayao Miyazaki-san, as well as um, all of Studio Ghibli, thank you for creating such beautiful worlds that we can all enjoy and always remind us to keep our geek on. 
Always. Clink, clink. Yeah. Later, guys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.